there isn't much concept involved in the energy except using those equations that we talked about earlier and also the idea of conservation of energy so let's just try to do some more practice and you get to it so let's try these four questions uh, 56 57 59 61 pause the video and we'll go for it together Okay, so let's look at the first question. So it said there's a block uh, moving through rough table, so there must be friction. And then uh, V is zero at the end, traveling through a certain distance, the force uh, opposed the motion. Calculate the work done by the opposing force. So, well, I think there's nothing special. Just, just apply the work done equation F times the S or D if you like to say and then just multiply them together so yeah really nothing special because they are running in the same direction uh, in calculator you may find this 7.68 uh, by obe obeying the rule of SF then you should actually have two SF only so 7.7 7 will be the answer uh, the unit will be joule okay next one um, so now it has a force that has an angle of 20 degree here um, and calculate the work done by the pulling force so uh, again it is quite straightforward you also use the equation but then you have to take the cosine theta cause uh, 20 degrees to the horizontal um, I mean one thing that you need to think about is not just blindly follow the equation given by the data booklet so it may not be cosine but in this case let's just think about it uh, when you have a force and 20 degrees like really what I show in the diagram correctly and so you want to find the force that is going horizontally sorry for I didn't draw very well horizontally and so this is a force that is parallel to the direction of your movement and in this case yes this is really cosine theta so how you do it will simply be substituting the rest and cosine 20 degree so use your calculator you can find 352.38 something and then obviously we'll take two SF so 350 joule all right or you can express it in scientific notation next this is one of the questions that I would really like you to try and uh, let me show you a wrong version first like which some people I guess around maybe 30 or 40 percent of student did it this way which is wrong so uh, when you see this you think oh that must be elastic potential energy and then you'll be using the equation half k x square k is spring constant x is extension and then you will just do this k you find oh 200 and then x will just be because this is 5 uh, 3 to 5 right so the change is 2 so you may do it like 5 minus 3 and then you find answer like oh, just use calculator you'll find the answer as uh, 400 so that would be the answer that again the wrong version would do let me show you the correct version uh, and I'll explain later on why alright so this is wrong the correct one uh, EPE actually how you do it should be you calculate both of them separately so uh, you can do k say kx squared 1 minus kx squared 2 something like that all right and of course you can extract the k and half out so you have uh, 200 here and then uh, this if you know maths carefully you should know this is 5 square minus 3 square and you will have the answer of 16002 and obviously these two uh, different number right and that is uh, fundamentally because these two are not the same right like y minus x bracket square is different from y square minus x square right you should have learned this in maths so you may ask so fundamentally uh, why must it be this one uh, to be the correct one in physics so that goes back to how we prove the equation once again so that's why I asked 
u to prove the equation at the first part of the uh, video in this series learning energy because learning how to prove it can help you understand how to use it think about this when you try to pull the spring uh, from zero this is how you do right I mean assuming the spring is following Hooke's law so I mean of course it has to be otherwise you can't use this equation anyway so in this case uh, you pull from say f uh, 3 to 5 then your work done is actually here right this yellow region only only okay and so how do you find this uh, is you, you can do it in two, two ways one is you can calculate this big triangle which is represented by these when I substitute 5 into it and then I can calculate um, the smaller triangle which is this one or right, substituting the 3 into x2 and so when you minus them you find the yellow region right which is the actual work done uh, that you are giving because uh, if you remember that is uh, work done is integrate the force with respect to the distance all right and then you would be using like in uh, maths you have learned about the finite integration then you may have something like x1 x2 something like that right and so you can find the area between these two points so you may say hey technically i can calculate the area of the trapezoid right uh, I would say yes, all right? So you can try to take a look here. If you try to calculate the area of this, although though it is a bit overkill, uh, you can try to see this would be k times three, all right? I don't care k, what k is. So this is upper base plus the lower base is k five, right? Cause f equals to kx right so k3 k5 for each these two point for the for the length of these two times the height the height is this one 5 minus 3 right divided by 2 so if you try to look at all these things you will find uh, it will be the same as the one that I said the correct method because if you try to take a look of these you can kind of take out the k and what's left here will be 3 plus 5 and then 5 minus 3 so that is exactly the same as 5 square minus 3 square because you learn again in math that uh, x plus y times x minus y equal to x square minus y square I mean so that's why this is equivalent to this and of course, you, I mean, if you just check carefully, you know that this is, again, exactly the same. So this is the, I think, the most interesting part uh, in this question. And again, hopefully you remember next time you shouldn't be doing this. You should calculate separately. All right, next question. Uh, in the next question, I will want to show you using two different approach. The first one, of course, is using energy. But then I want to show you that, again, using kinematics and also Newton's law can actually solve the question as well but then it might be well actually it's obviously more complicated that way so let me just show you the energy approach first so first of all what you have to do is understand understand the situation that when it is at A you have GPE so that's why I put GPE here under well, this is A, A and B are just for me to you know to show you only so GPE here at the same time, the question told you that there is speed, so there must be some KE. When this is at B, uh, the question told you that it is 12 meters per second, so it was still having KE, and also it's a different KE, so I can put KE B and KE A for uh, distinguishing. At the same time, the question also said, uh, ask, ask you to estimate the frictional force. So obviously there, there is friction, you cannot assume there's zero I mean there's nothing then there's no point calculating it so uh, for the work done you'll be writing this here because that will be the energy you have to take out from the original energy all right in this pool you take it out for work done so for calculation uh, it will be you should be putting some general equations so here I just skip those lines 
uh, it will be half mv square you know m you know the initial speed and then this will be mgh m will be x g h will be given here right the vertical height for kd again uh, you know the speed is 12 so you know it uh, as for the w the work done it would be fine by of course the general equation that is f equals to or sorry not f the work done equals to f times s or d right which is parallel to the direction so for the friction obviously it will be going in the backward direction um, like opposites to the velocity direction that your movement in this direction and the distance or the direction of movement as you say you are moving is going down the slope all right parallel to the slope so in that case uh, what you have is obviously uh, the force which is the friction you want to find times the distance and the distance for this slope literally this one could be fine using trigonometry because you know this one is 12 and you know the angle is 30 degree so you then you can then find out uh, a b the length is 12 over sine 30 in that case you can then find out uh, the force will be 22 right simply as that so now let's take a look of how you can use kinematics approach to do it so first of all um, we can try to see what information we have we have u v a is unknown because uh, we know there is a force pulling it down which is mg sine theta or w sine theta as I mentioned to you many times that you should remember it uh, but then there's friction so acceleration you can't know directly but you want to know it because after that you can use f equals to ma to find out uh, the force the net force and then you can find out the friction for s it will be the same way it will be um, like what we did 12 over sine 30 so using this information because you have three known variable already so to find one unknown that is a will be very simple right something that you must be able to do so using the kinematics equation you can find a equals to 2.25 meter, meter per second square after that what you can do is uh, you could go for f equals to ma because now you know a and you know m then you can find the expression for f as well because again uh, there is only one I mean two force mg sine theta and also the friction going against it so that will be mg sine theta sorry mg sine 30 minus the friction and the only unknown is the friction so again uh, if you solve it you can find the final answer is 22 newton again the most satisfying part is you find these two uh, will be exactly the same if you haven't done the kinematics one, I would recommend you try it also if you have time.